Let's talk about the X lookup function in Google Sheets with seven examples covering all sorts of different scenarios where previously you would have required VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, index match, if error, error handling formulas. And XLOOKUP comes along, simplifies all of that, and lets you perform all of those lookup operations and error handling with a single formula. It's the most powerful and flexible of the lookup style functions. So it's well worth mastering, and I recommend adding this function to your data toolkit. So let's get into it. Imagine that we have this transaction table, and then somewhere else in our sheets, uh, you know, I put it right next to it here so you can see, but you know, perhaps this is in a different tab or it's in another table. And we want to bring across you know, the revenue associated with this um, ID number. Great, so we'll say equals X lookup. Let's open it out and study it for a little bit. So it has a search key, it has a lookup range and a result range. So it separates the lookup and the results range, which is the key difference, which means they can be in either order now. Then we're able to specify what happens if something is missing. We don't need to use the if error wrapper anymore, so that's really nice. And then we have the, the same matching mode, a bit like a VLOOKUP, where we can match exactly, or look for something bigger or look for something smaller. Uh, we also have this really nice search mode option where we can search from the top down, or we can start at the bottom of our list and work our way up and search upwards, and we'll see an example for that. And we even have something called a binary search. So if you're doing really large, uh, you have your really huge tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of rows of data, you might want to use that binary search to make the thing, uh, everything super, super fast. But let's start with some simple examples. So we'll search for this. The lookup range is this one, we're going to look in there. And then the result range is this one here, and then we'll hit enter. And we don't have to specify the match mode, you know, the one, zero, or minus one. It's just there by default. It just is an exact match by default. So, so it's definitely easier to use. It's definitely just search for this, have a look for it in here. And then if you find it in here, whatever position you find it in, so it's position six, it looks like, go down and find the same value that was in position six of this result range. Now, let's do another one here. So we'll say equals X lookup. We're going to search for this one now. Same deal. We'll search in here and return the answer from here. And oh, look at that. It's given me, it didn't find the value. This transaction ID wasn't found. Now, in the olden days, what we would have done is said, if error, then say, uh, you know, missing or no match. So you have the extra formula and then, you know, you would have embedded the, the VLOOKUP in here, but you still had the extra step. Now what we can do is we can just do that direct in here. So we, we come inside. The first optional argument now is what to put if the value is missing. So here we are, the value is missing. So we'll say search value not found to be super explicit. And there we go, it now shows that for me. And if I had another one that was in there that we know is there, let's lock the references for the ranges, same as we would with the VLOOKUP. Important to lock those search and result ranges so they don't slide down when you drag your formula down. Then we'll, we'll go with that. And look, it's just gone and found that now. So when it finds it, it just brings it back. When it's not there, it will say, you know, search value not found. So that's really nice. Great. Now I did say we could look to the left, which of course is the great advantage of the X lookup. So X lookup, search for this. We're going to search here and return the results from here. So to the left of it, or we could have returned the value from the state. Let's do that this time. So it's looked here and then it's returned values from over here to the left. So there we go. That's how easy it is now to do a VLOOKUP to the left. We don't need to use complex array literals to build virtual data sets and all the other faffing around we had to do to make it work with the VLOOKUP. It's very simple now with the X lookup. 
Now the XOR hoop can do an approximate matching as well. So in this example, let's say I am looking at bank balances and I have a bank balance, a business account balance of $137,000, and this is the interest rates, depending on which band you're in. So this one clearly lies in this band here, 100,000 to 249,000, interest rate of 1.25%. We can't search these because they're text, essentially just string values. So what I've done is, is created a, a, a numeric column that we can search that we can compare this value against. That is just the, the minimum, the lower bound of the, the balances. And what we'll do is we'll say, okay, find this in here. It's obviously doesn't find it exactly, but find the nearest one that is smaller. So it'll go, yeah, it's bigger, it's bigger, it's bigger. Oh, it's smaller than that. And I'll drop back and give me this one. Uh, and it's the 100,000 value. So X look up, there's the search key. We're going to search in here. We're going to return a result from here. Not worried about missing value because that's irrelevant in this case because we are not searching with the exact match anymore. So let's read about these match modes. So zero is the exact match. As I said, we're not doing the exact match. We'll never find 137,832 exactly. One is for a match or the next value that's bigger than the search key. So if I did it that way, it would it would end up giving me the 1.75, which is the wrong one. Minus one is the one we want for an exact match that is the next value that is lower than the search key. All right, so let's put in minus one. Hit enter, and there we go. It gives me that 1.25% because as I said, it searches larger, it's larger, it's larger, it's larger, uh, it's smaller. I'll jump back to the one that was less than. Now, if I had it as one, then it would give me the one that is on the bigger side over here, which obviously in this case is the wrong result because my one lies in this value here. So in this case, we need to get the one that's smaller and the one that's smaller we find with the minus one. So let's take a look at wildcard matching, which we can do. So. There we go. So we have this table here and I have the surname Peterson. Let's see if we can find the full name for this Peterson character with the X lookup. So we'll say X lookup. And in fact, I'm going to drop down slightly the resolution so that we, or, or the um, size here, just so we can see more easily. So X lookup. So we want to obviously search for this one, but Peterson, we're not going to find Peterson in the names because there's some first name in front of it. So we need to do something called a wild card first. So what we want to do essentially is look for star Peterson like that, because then that says find a match Peterson at the end of the string. I don't care what's in front of it. It could be no characters. It could be a whole bunch of characters, uh, including spaces. And then that will find the Liam Peterson. So with the wild cards, we have star, like I explained, can match anything you like, basically any characters. Then we have the question mark, which means match a single character. So that would be a placeholder for one specific character. And then we also even have a tilde, which is when you want to search, you want to actually match the question mark. So I'm searching to try and match a question mark um, or, or a star. I need that tilde to sort of escape. It's called the escape character, just to, to tell it, I'm not using the star as my wildcard character. I'm actually looking for a star now. Okay, but in this case, we want star, which says match anything. And then we're going to say, and Peterson. And, and that's going to build a little string, like I, you can see it there, star Peterson, which will match any name that ends with Peterson. Okay, so that's our search key. We are going to look in here and we're going to return the result from here as well. We're going to just stay inside of the, the same range reference. Uh, and then we'll say uh, missing if it was missing. It's not also fill yet, so it's missing, which is very odd because we know that the Peterson's there. And what we're missing ourselves, we're actually missing is I need to go comma again, the match mode. If we look at the match mode, we looked at zero, uh, that defaults to zero, so we often won't need to actually put the zero there. We looked at one for the match being bigger. We looked at minus one for the next, value that is lower. 
and then two is the wildcard match. So we need to put two in here to then tell it it's the wildcard match. And you can see sure enough that then it matches and it finds and returns the Liam Peterson. So let's copy this formula and put it in here. So you've got the same one again. And we'll come in, we want the bias state now. Change it back to yellow. Okay, so we're coming in and really all we want to do now is return the result from the bias state in E instead of um, A here. So we'll just move the return result range over to here to E. And then we can hit, hit enter and it's now from Florida. So it's still searching for just Peterson, but it finds it here and then it returns Florida. So that's the wildcard match. Make sure you put the set it to number two and then we can use these stars to do that wildcard matching. Okay, uh, then let's take a look at returning multiple results next. So I'll say X lookup. The search key is in fact this one here. Let's just close that for now. We're going to search in the transaction ID and then we're going to return the values from these three. And there we go. You can see that it returns, oops, that one's formatted as a date. So in fact, what we'll do is we'll, we'll go and return, we'll include the date, why not? And there we go, now it's returned that whole row for this value. So that's quite nice. So it's gone and searched, found this one and returned this whole row for me. Okay, let's see one last example, which is that we can search from the bottom up as well as top down. So traditionally, we always start with searching from the top and work our way down, but we can with the XLOOKUP say, actually, I want to start at the bottom of my column and work our way up. So we'll look at two, the two here. So top down, bottom up. And we're going to search for Texas and Texas, and we'll say X look up. Uh, we're going to search Texas. Let's open this out because it's useful. The lookup range is here. Let's lock that because we're going to copy this formula. The result range is the two here, the two columns. We'll lock that. Uh, we'll say missing. If it was missing, we'll put that in. Match mode is just zero to be exact. And then the search mode. So one is to search from the first entry to the last one. So this is going to be number one. And then minus one will search from the last entry to the first. So we'll try one and there we go. Sophia Lewis. So we'll copy that down. Still finds the first one, which is this one here, Sophia Lewis. So we'll jump in change that one to a minus one, a minus 11, minus one, hit enter. Now it searches from the bottom up and it finds Texas there, Ava Evans 9200. So there's the bottom one and there's the top one, it finds those two. You'll notice there's also a third one in there which we don't pick up with the X lookup. Now, if you wanted to find that one, it's very easy, obviously you could just do the filter function or the query function. Uh, so let's just see this quickly in action. There we go. And that filter there, that filter function would pull out all three if you did want all three. But we're looking at the X lookup. Uh, and there it is, the beautiful X lookup with the minus one as the search mode at the end to search from the bottom up. Now, the only other thing to mention quickly with the search is that we can search with using a binary search, which makes it very, very fast. So if you have a really big data set, you can use a binary search from the top to the bottom or the bottom to the top, and it's very, very fast, but you need your data to be in ascending order. So you need to make sure it's in ascending order for the binary search to work. Great, that folks is the wonderful X lookup. If you know how to use a VLOOKUP, then you can definitely master the XLOOKUP. It's no more difficult, just a little bit, a few more options, a little bit more to get used to with the syntax at first, but it's really just the same concept. So, all right, that's it for this video. That's the XLOOKUP function. I hope you found that useful. And 
please come back again for more videos in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.